Okay, hello everyone. Glad to see so many participants here today. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Stan and I'm a fourth year uh, PhD student here at uh, Tallinn University, where I also work as a junior research fellow at the Center of Excellence in Media Innovation and uh, Digital Culture. Uh, additionally, I'm also a, a freelance film critic, uh, but today I wanted to imagine with you uh, what the post-pandemic uh, cinema culture might uh, look like. Uh, so for a larger uh, portion of the last two years, cinema going culture has been on hold. Uh, different unprecedented worldwide uh, lockdowns and restriction have uh, interfered with routines and practices around cinema going as well as strategies of production and distribution. The constant closures of theaters, postponements of uh, new releases, and streaming favoring release strategies have reduced uh, the significance of and the formal establishing nature of such uh, selling points as only in cinemas and coming to soon to cinemas. This has surely affected the expectations and perceptions that the audience has towards cinema going. That is how they choose what kind of film is worthy of their time in cinema theater. What kind of other activities uh, are attached to their uh, cinema going experience? Or uh, is cinema going even a viable option considering the risk of getting infected? It also has been argued to a degree of banality that the pandemic has accelerated pre-existing trends of platformization of film consumption. Uh, Why the growing importance of streaming platforms indeed has its effect on the underlying structures of uh, production and distribution, the arguments of streaming killing uh, cinema going should be taken with a grain of salt. The theatrical window and the theatrical experience is rather changing than dying. Such aspects were the reason uh, why today I want to talk about cinema going in the post-pandemic era, as it also seems that at least in Europe we are entering a new phase uh, with COVID. And actually today is the day when last restrictions uh, were lifted in Estonia and cinemas can be entered without the COVID certificate and can be also open after 11 p.m. So in order to talk about if and how the theatrical experience might evolve, I will use my own uh, research project uh, backdrop. Uh, in my project, I interviewed and surveyed cinema goers, uh, producers, directors, financiers, uh, distributors, and CEOs of cinema theater, theaters in Estonia, to understand how film experiences are uh, being shaped uh, multidimensionally. The analysis of the audience experiences resulted, resulted in defining uh, eventfulness and experience, collectivity and sociality, being focused and staying offline, as well as conditions of film consumption as the most important things that the audiences expect from the cinema going experience. For the rest of the talk, I will use these categories to imagine the post pandemic cinema going experience, although it is hard to anticipate or even talk about uh, these things in the current situation. But uh, let's give it a try. First and foremost, uh, going to the cinema theater is an event and nothing will take that away from it. It requires moderate individual or collective planning and spatial movement. It provides an experiential framework for going out, to, for going to see a film and for experiencing a film versus just watching a film at home. It is a distinctive, distinctive cultural, social entertainment event that is tied together with uh, a curated and exclusive program. And on the basis of it, 
the cinema goer structures her or his behavior. Cinema going as an event and as a distinct experience is something that is anticipated, organized, and experienced, whereas it involves different activities before and after the screening. From walking to the atmospheric old town to the art house cinema theater to going out to dinner and drinks afterwards. As it involves a created and exclusive program, it is surrounded by the aura of fear of missing out as well as exclusive exclusivity. Cinema going also encapsulates the essence of event films that people are eager to see as soon as possible in the venues. Now, my research also shows that cinema theaters acknowledge this and try to enhance the eventfulness of the cinema experience. This is done, for example, by organizing special events, which among other things provide additional marketing tools for cinema theaters and distributors, as well as a way, it's as a way to underline the exclusivity of cinema going, but also to ensure a positive word of mouth for specific films. In Estonia, we see a lot of, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, pre-release screenings and premieres starting already from Tuesdays and Wednesdays on the release week. These often include free drinks and snacks, uh, lotteries, quizzes with prizes, uh, photo walls or other uh, activities attached to the events. Uh, we have also seen screenings with invited guests. That means uh, filmmakers attend different screenings with Q&A sessions uh, afterwards, especially when uh, the theater window opens. We also see uh, st uh, special screenings with uh, invited guests, uh, including professionals in certain fields, uh, and they discuss different topics and themes after the screening and so forth. There are also a lot of uh, screenings for certain target audiences, special screenings for men and women, in which different businesses present their products and give out free stuff. Screenings for teenagers or school students with commercial and or uh, educational aims. We have special screenings for the elderly during the daytime, where they build communities and feel safe around people from the same age group. We have screenings for parents, so for small children, special weekend screenings for families, highly curated thematic charm based or retrospective programs for the cinephiles or other target audiences. And even the act of introducing every single screening in an outdoors theater is a way to make the uh, screening more special. As said, these efforts highlight the exclusivity of the cinema going and emphasize cinema theater's strong position within the experience economy in which consumers seek effective, special, and unique experiences. So these aspects of eventfulness and experience in mind, I would like to sum up the category with the following three predictions. Firstly, eventfulness will be an important aspect of the post-pandemic cinema going, as cinemas will use the described measures to lure in different audiences, maintain loyal customers, and revitalize their cinema going routines, as well as to emphasize the exclusive features of the cinema going experience. Secondly, uh, tenfold and event films, and especially the constant flow of them, will be essential for both audiences and cinemas in creating ex and experiencing FOMO and, and riding the bus around the films. However, specialized and art house films can still do reach uh, audiences through becoming and global or local events as the pre-pandemic success of Parasite uh, demonstrate. So the question for filmmakers is how to achieve how to create and maintain a viral marketing campaigns or buzz around film. Thirdly, the hybridity and multifunctionality of events will be key for building loyal audiences. 
So ma no matter whether these hybrid events are commercially oriented or have a more community artistically or educationally oriented aims. Now, continuing with collectivity and sociality as aspects that are seen from the cinema going experience. This is also something that is a distinctive feature of cinema going practice. It also enhances the eventfulness of it. Sociality entails performing uh, cinema going together with someone, thus reproducing the sense of uh, togetherness. As a social practice, it is part of the fabric of how people uh, manage their relationships with friends, spouses, companions, family members, relatives, co-workers, and so forth. As a social event, cinema going is something that gives structure doing things together with someone. It provides a framework for different activities. Uh, it provides a shared goal and an opportunity to experience something jointly. Also, my research has shown that when society, sociality is perceived as a positive aspect of experiencing a film in a cinema theater, the presence of others in home setting is often perceived as a disrupting factor. Collectivity, on the other hand, entails an idealized audience that knows how to respond to a particular film and act in the theater without causing distraction. Collectivity thus refers to the presence of other audience members with whom the film is experienced. The presence and emotional reactions of other audience members establishes a unique atmosphere around the film experience trust drawing a clear distinction between watching a film at home and experiencing it in a cinema theater. <clears throat> cinema theaters can contribute to this feature by supporting the consumption journey of the audience through creating convenient pathways and cozy spaces for pre and post screening sociality. In the post pandemic setting, it also it is also important to contribute to the aspects assuring the cleanliness and safety of the journey. By supporting this category has a lot to do with the design of the venue as well as those eventization activities that support sociality and seek to create distinctive events for different target audiences. It has also a lot to do with offering special ticket prices and other deals for different social groups. It is about taking account the needs of different social groups rather than demographically defined target audiences and designing experiences that support the sociality of these uh, social uh, constellations. Especially uh, with art house cinemas and smaller venues, collectivity and sociality is interconnected with their efforts to establish a community around the venue. And events, as well as personified, communication via social media uh, are a few examples of this, of, of achieving this. Again, with these remarks about sociality and collectivity as background, I would like to sum up the category with the following predictions. So despite the lingering effect of the pandemic, most audience groups, we get over the fear of being with a large crowd in a closed space. However, with the more careful groups, such as the elderly, which as such has been a hard to reach target audience, especially in Estonia, at, in the first place, uh, this group needs uh, closer attention, uh, specific measures to lure them in. So secondly, offering culturally, socially, and experientially hybrid events and designing experiences that take the nature of sociality and collectivity into consideration are key in alluring audiences back to the cinema team. Now, as a next category that my research revealed as essential for cinema going, uh, we have being focused and staying offline. This category emphasizes the position that cinema going has acquired in the media saturated everyday life in which our media and social media consumption and communication patterns make it very hard to disconnect ourselves from the constant flow of information 
and the endless need of being available. Where second screening is a typical feature of home watching, cinema going provides a socially understandable and convenient way for being offline. Uh, thus providing a reason not to engage with your smart devices during the film and a reason to escape from the everyday media saturated life. My informants uh, argued that cinema going provides 100% attention to the film. It provides focus as well as discipline to watch the film until the end, which seems to be the things that watching a film at home wouldn't afford. So going to the cinema can be as much about achieving disconnectivity as it is about escapism. While cinema theaters can support this quality with uh, guiding audiences behavior with rules, restricting and reacting to smart device use, and by having a movie going etiquette, there isn't much more about this category that can be done by the cinema theaters. However, I would sum up the category with the following concluding prediction. The need to be offline, disconnected and focused on the film. Through going to the cinema theater, we have a growing importance for audiences in the post pandemic setting where people seek affective, immersive experiences and ways to escape from the media saturated everyday routines. As the last category that the analysis led to uh, is the conditions for film consumption. Conditions of, for film consumption contains the material, technological and environmental circumstances that the cinema going experience is expected to provide. Whereas the lack of this is usually perceived as a negative aspect of home watching. A bigger screen with higher image quality, better sound quality, comfortable seating, dark and clean room, immersiveness of the space, and a suitable and special atmosphere are the aspects that constitute the condition for film consumption, which also highlight the significance of materiality, as well as the ambience of venues in shaping the nature of cinema going. Although these aspects manifest themselves differently on the basis of the type of the venue, whether it's an independent cinema, art house cinema, multiplex, or so forth, they all come under the conditions for film consumption. That is, the conditions are important for different types of venues, whether it's, it is a multiplex with technologically advanced halls or a small one stream art house theater in a historical building with distinctive decor, style, and vibe. The condition suitable for film experience is something that is seeked by the audience of both kinds of theaters. Cinema theaters in Estonia have done a lot to de develop their venues in the last decade. They have made uh, remarkable investments uh, into the quality of image and sound comfortableness and the variety of services attached to the experience. For example, uh, the mid-sized halls have lessened the amount of seating and focused on uh, providing wider and reclining seats with a lot of leg room, premium seats and so forth. There are more and more halls uh, with opportunity for the food during the film there are more and more halls with tables along with the seating. And there are also more and more deep sections with unlimited snacks opportunities or with an secluded bar or lounge areas. Um, but also Arthur's cinemas make efforts to support the atmosphere of their unique venues by adding quirky details, upgrading seats and improving the ambience in order to match their eventization efforts. Making the user journey as a self-service experience is also part of the improving of the conditions and it already started before the pandemic in Estonia. So making the journey contact-free, removing the cashier 
from the buying experience seem to be the trends that the bigger cinema chains follow. While art house cinemas cherish the traditional approach for user journey, where there is more personal and direct interaction between the cinema goer and staff. These aspects of conditions for film consumption in mind, I, I would like to sum up the category with the following predictions. Firstly, the efforts of making the cinema experience special through developing the material, technological, and environmental conditions of cinema going will continue. Multiplexes will try to make their halls more comfortable, add additional services to the experience, or introduce speciality halls with threads or other type of vibe uh, in, the, in the style and decor, or introduce more private halls with deep atmosphere and services. That is efforts that aim to provide a more luxurious experience. Secondly, Archer cinemas will focus on developing their traditional classical and atmospheric approach to venue design, but introduce event-based uh, feature to their venues that are designed on the basis of specific films or wider events. All in all, these four categories uh, summarizing the expectations around cinema going encapsulate the diversity of the experiential, social, material, and affective aspects that converge to shape the contemporary cinema going experience and also the practices that surround and encourage it. All of these aspects also appear in my recent visit to the cinema theater. A few weeks ago, I went to see the Batman in the local multiplex. It was a, a premiere event. The screening was in a recently updated hall with IMAX technology. The smooth user journey was ensured with free parking and self-service machines. The launch of the theater had Batman themed elements for photo opportunities. The hall had a secluded VIP area with premium seating. The premiere was on Wednesday instead of Thursday or Friday. Uh, the event had a film team quiz uh, with film related prices that I had to see through before the film. Also, Cinema Theater's business partners offered free snacks and drinks uh, before the screening, and the screening was completely sold out. Although I don't have the recipe for ensuring the flourishing of the cinema culture after the pandemic, I feel that the categories of eventfulness and experience, collectivity and sociality, being focused and staying offline, as well as conditions for film consumption, sum up the expectations that the audience will have about cinema going to the future. I, I'm also confident that the appetite for cinematic experiences hasn't disappeared anywhere. And cinema going as still a, rel a relatively affordable form of entertainment will continue to draw audiences, uh, especially when cinema theaters will continue to make extra efforts that turn the visit into an even more experientially, materially, socially, and culturally special experience. So thanks for your time and attention. And I'm looking forward to discussing this further with you. So do you have any further questions for discussion? Hi, Stan. Hi. Thank you for a really interesting talk. Um, and my name is Diogo Connell. I come from IADT and um, I coordinate the New Media Studies program. And a number of our students are here at the talk. Um, I, I, it's absolutely fascinating. And, you know, I'm really interested in how many times the death knell of cinema has been declared over the past more than 100 years and never has it happened you know so and that is just wonderful and uh, it's heartening to see to hear you predict that it'll only go from strength 
um, post pandemic and that the experience is going to be very, very different. Um, pure anecdotally and observationally from um, a Dublin perspective where I live, uh, I've, I don't know if this resonates at all with your experience, but it seems um, in recent times that where the audiences are really flocking to, and when I've been to the cinema in an art house context, the screenings have been absolutely jam-packed, whereas in the more suburban omniplex cinema or cineplex, aside from, you know, the Batmans, which, you know, I'm not the target marker for, um, there has been a, a tiny audiences. So I'm just wondering is, um, do you think, we're heading for a more exclusionary versus diverse cinema or is there you know how, how, how do we kind of it seems to be almost a contradiction in terms that you know it fragments yet it doesn't get more diverse so I'm just wondering uh, what your your thoughts on that might be mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I agree that that first the uh, structure of the market is different in Estonia and that kind of uh, guides the efforts that different types of cinema take. So as, for example in uh, in Tallinn uh, we have a few uh, bigger cinema chains with multiplexes and uh, two uh, main uh, art house cinemas and they indeed have very distinct audiences and uh, approaches to programming. So uh, for example these uh, uh, multiplexes uh, one of them uh, is a lean towards offering a very diverse slate of films, while the other one, which has also gained a lot of uh, traction in terms of uh, uh, expanding their business in both in Tallinn and elsewhere, uh, doesn't really uh, uh, put effort to uh, giving out diversity in terms of what they offer. Uh, but again, uh, in Tartu, uh, uh, where uh, we have seen a lot of changes, uh, Tartu is the second biggest uh, town in uh, Estonia. Uh, we have seen a lot of changes in terms of one uh, big uh, cinema chain closing their venue in recent days and another uh, getting pushed uh, away from the center. And uh, then we have a uh, new, uh, the one that is uh, expanding the businesses uh, entering the market there, uh, which means that uh, diversity will uh, go down. down. Uh, but what that will mean to the art art cinemas is an interesting question, especially when we have these smaller towns and so forth. I'm not sure if I answered your questions, but, but these are my thoughts that emerge, emerge from it. Yeah, no, it's it's very interesting what your research is presenting, and um, you know what strikes me is the the parallels in what you're recounting here, and you know what the experience is in Ireland. So thank you for that. It's really interesting. Thanks. Thanks for your question. Yes, Liz. Hi, um, my name is Lisa Nevever, and I did a, a PhD on uh, audiences, uh, historical, but also contemporary. Um, I have two minor questions for you because I loved your presentation. What's really interesting is the fact that um, the research I did about five years ago is very similar to what you are doing now and your answers are also similar. So it's very interesting to see that there's a persistence in cinema going that remains even though we went through a pandemic. But I have two questions. First of all, the one thing I did find in my research is the financial aspect, because now you're talking a lot about what the exhibition sector can do, uh, but a lot of it costs a lot of money. And for audiences, for cinema going to become even more expensive might, uh, might not be the best way to go. And a second, I would love to hear your opinion on um, some of the current decisions of big media corporates like Disney, who very clearly go for the streaming platforms uh, with the release of Luca and Soul and now um, uh, turning red to go exclusively to streaming platforms. So there seems to be like from a production side, I, I feel the need for a lot of these media corporates to go 
to the individualized uh, movie experience. So I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your question and uh, thanks you for your work also. I'm referring to a lot of your papers in, in my uh, articles that will be soon uh, published hopefully. Um, so the financial aspect uh, for the audience side, in Estonia, we haven't seen that rapid uh, increase of the ticket price, although the idea of uh, adding like premiers, premium services and premium seating means that these uh, tickets are, uh, uh, the prices of these tickets are higher, but uh, we haven't re re uh, reached the point where they have become too expensive for the audience and actually with the interviews with the CEOs of cinema theaters to say that these tickets are sold super fast or there are very clear segments of the audience that really want to go to the, these uh, halls with premium seating and higher prices. Um, but uh, the tendency to lean towards these kind of specialized events, lean towards uh, adding more services to it kind of, kind of that starts to mean that the ticket needs to be higher at some point. Um, but I think with art or cinemas, uh, they really uh, try to reach the smaller groups. They try to least reach the groups that perhaps are not that able to buy, pay for a higher ticket price. That means the elderly or the students and so forth. So they have all the, their ticketing uh, policies aimed to target uh, these groups with lower lower ticket prices. Uh, but uh, with the uh, big media collaborates uh, favoring streaming uh, and how that will play out in Estonia uh, it's interesting to see because as for Disney Plus as for HBO, HBO Max these services haven't reached Estonia yet and actually Turning Red uh, uh, will premiere in Estonia this week so it's in cinema theaters um, so uh, it's hard to hard to predict how that uh, will play out in Estonia because it's such a small market for these streaming services. But uh, but let's see, it seems that yet it hasn't uh, like had an, its effect on, uh, on, on, on cinema theaters. And one thing that I want to emphasize is I really, really enjoy the uh, long tail uh, strategies of uh, art house cinema or independent cinemas in Estonia, as they tend to uh, play some new films in their programs, even for months after they have reached streaming services, because when they hit like a milestone in terms of Oscars nomination or other things, they put it up in programs and it's even possible uh, to achieve good numbers one year after their initial initial uh, release. So these kind of things uh, are easy, are easy, in, in, very uh, interesting to follow uh, how this work in small theaters. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Do we have other questions? Okay, then. Uh, it was really interesting to talk to you today. I'm really happy that uh, we got the discussion going and I could clarify a few things because I kind of tried to encapsulate uh, the cinema going experience from the perspective of the audience, but add a few details here and there from the industry side. Um, and I'm looking forward, forward to discussing these things with you probably in the future. Thank you, thank you for the kind words too. So have a great afternoon and I hope to see you soon.